Um, not everybody wants to kind of dial down and see the nitty gritty of what really happens behind the scenes. So for those of you who are interested in more detailed content, um, lots of information, um, I have put together a library of videos. Currently, it has over 33 hours um, and growing, and it will keep growing. And the reason it's growing is because I have a membership group called Watch, Learn, Grow. And this group, um, I started about uh, almost a year ago, and in this group, there are a lot of dedicated artists who decided that they also wanted to have a lot more information. They wanted to have more access to my critiques and my tutorials. And so all of these types of things are in the library. And what I'm offering then is a subscription to just the library. So while the other membership group has access to live conference calls where we do critiques and where we have a, a private Facebook group, this upcoming new subscriber uh, membership is going to be for just the library. So I hope if you're interested and want to get more information on um, how to have access to lots of video content that you can binge on, um, things like watching me paint, of course, um, watching me paint in different mediums, um, how I'm preparing for an upcoming solo exhibition. I'm sharing that information in the library, uh, how I critique work, how I critique my own work, and um, super fun challenges to keep you inspired, uh, challenges that are uh, design and some are on color. And, and I just have so much information that I'd love to share, but it's gonna be in this Watch, Learn, Grow library. So if you have any interest in binging on tons of videos, just fill out the form and request more information so that when it becomes available, you'll be the first to know. Okay, thanks very much. I hope you enjoy it. But as I go through, um, you know, layer by layer, I'm not sure. It looks like to me it's going to go a little, a little bit lighter. I certainly had a nice dark background, so. So the question is, when you glaze, you know, if, if the color that you're glazing with is really dark, it can change the value of the base color, as you can see here. That's going to dictate, you know, how quickly you have to work. And this is where I wanted you to see that you're going to get something that looks a bit muddy because whenever you combine complements, red and green, so cool and warm you're going to get something that you may not really want, or maybe you do want it, but at least you know, if you get it, you know why you got it. That's the important thing, is why did you get mud if you got mud? I only got, you know, black, white, and gray. The idea then is uh, we're gonna do this little design exercise. I want this predominantly high key, so I'm gonna cut into it. I'm gonna save the scraps. When you're painting, you know, you're, you're guesstimating, you're eyeballing it. You're, you don't have a calculator, you don't have a scale. You're not trying to be uh, too over analytical. Uh, that would be a negative shape, this would be a positive shape, and a third amount of midtone. And if you start to feel like uh, any situation where, gosh, my, my midtone is kind of the same as my black, When you also don't know what's missing or there's something that you love about it, you know, but can't explain exactly that, um, remember this 
phrase because so many times in the art world, I feel like we really can't figure out why we either love something or don't love it. Um, I also did that with the green. Notice over here, the green, like this shape, which looks like collage material, may have gone on top of the green. But over here, I just kind of connected that green shape. I, I made this right. And so now I don't feel as strong in that directional pull. And I just adjusted one of the shapes in lower right. So it was camouflaged. Um, notice here. Um, now you see it, now you don't. The shape is still there. Even the little red blotches in there, they're still there. But when you camouflage it, which means, I mean, you can think about a hunter. How does he camouflage when he's in, he's hunting? He needs to look like his surroundings. So this camouflage um, technique is allows you to keep your shape, but kind of change the value so it disappears. If you tend to want to do something on your own that's large, I would definitely recommend you have a helper with you. Uh, it's definitely going to be more challenging and the, the, the risk goes up the larger it is. So you might totally screw it up. I mean, I, I know that in my own studio that I may mess it up, you know? Yeah, that's a good question. So when you're mixing the Galkid with the cold wax medium, that's usually in my, what I do is like one part Galkid to three parts cold wax. Part, medium. yes, I saw that, yes. Okay, so now that I will store in a tin all on its own because I don't, I don't mess with that ratio. I leave it the same so that I don't have to worry okay. about, you know, changing it up all the time. So that's in a tin. And then I'll take that out and, and that is one, up to one to one with your oil paint. The thing I realized moving forward, what we just looked at was kind of the first stage with the, with the um, short list, I suppose. Right. But I've also realized once you've got that far, it's really worth um, like pushing it just a little bit further. And, and in, if in terms of describing in, in words what these things are that you love, it really, it's really worth taking the time to make it as precise as you possibly can. Your first PowerPoint, which, you know, the length of it must have been, I don't know how many photos, that doesn't really matter, Quite but let's lot. just consider that you've got this gigantic funnel and you're kind of throwing it all in there. But, you know, the whole point of this is to distill things down. So I think after I saw that, it was like, okay, Rob, your next stage then would be to um, distill this down. This a large amount of information down to the three to five things that you feel, you know, you must have in your work. And so that's kind of what led, I think, to the next PowerPoint we're going to take a look at. Four panels yeah. all have that similar black black line, um, the gestural line and shapes um, that I start with. And, and my plan here was to start them all the same uh -huh. and then treat them completely different from each other and then try to bring them back so that they're related again. And obviously I'm still in the completely different <laughs> from each other stage. So these are all works in progress. Okay. And uh, I'm, I'm not quite at the place where I think I can tie them together again. And... The longer wall is actually taller than the shorter wall. Um, this is the main level. And then the two little subsections there represent the upstairs. Uh, you have to walk upstairs to get to those smaller galleries. So that's kind of what I'm showing you here.